Hey folks, Landstrider here, and welcome to episode 16 in my Utopia Resurrection series on the Feed the Beast Launcher. Um, we are here in the space station conglomerate, and we are in front of the nuclear reactor because that is the goal today, is to get the reactor online. So Dornell's already wearing his safety gear, and I have another set of safety gear made up right here so I can go in and work with the parts and move uh, uranium rods and MOX rods around for uh, whatever I need to. So we put a arcane door on the outside here just so only me and Dornell have access to the reactor just in case because this is going to be a MOX reactor. It's going to be running at a very high temperature, very close to critical, and any fooling around with the reactor could potentially cause a nuclear meltdown. So we don't want anybody having access to it that uh, doesn't completely understand how it works. So We've got a double door, we've got the arcane door on the outside, then we have a reinforced door here. And all of these blocks are warded so that if something bad does happen, it should prevent it from uh, destroying the entire base. So. so first things first is, if we look in there, there's the reactor. It's a uh, six-chamber reactor. Goes down into the floor one. These again are all warded blocks. Actually, I think I might need to put another layer of warded blocks around these corners because blasts can come through corners at an angle. So I'm not sure that. Of course, the only one that actually has a block is right there. So actually, I think I'm good. That's good because there's no angles for the blast to come through. It's all solid because there's only one block of the chamber that's in set into the floor to get it to to set there like that. Uh, I'm not doing the new 5x5 five five, uh, fluid reactor or whatever um, liquid reactor that IC2 has added just yet. I want to start out with this. MOX reactor seems to, is going to work pretty good. The reason we're going straight to MOX is because we can mine plutonium and make MOX out of that. Um, and then we got an MFSU sitting right here. And then we're going to move that other MFSU from the old uh, advanced generator. And the advanced generator's got to go today. We have like T minus eight hours or so to get rid of this before Nemesun brings down the, the, the server and updates, and that'll be gone. So if we want any materials out of that, we've got to take it apart and go salvage it as soon as possible. And the other MFSU is going to sit right there. And I'm going to rip this. Uh, cell out of here, and I'm going to go upgrade it to a resonant cell. Okay, I'm not sure you can upgrade a leadstone hardened cell. I think you have to start with a redstone energy cell and upgrade it to a resonant. But we do need a resonant cell for sure. Let's see, and oh, wrong way. Oh yeah, I want to put these cables in because that's also something else I want to get from up here. I need some. I have no power to the ME system. Hold on. This is a bad time to be doing that. Um, I moved this yeah, cell yeah. and it lost its power? Yep. The, the cell is its power. And without that uh, energy cell, we don't have any ME system. So. Okay, well I put it back. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so I need some red net. Well, I think I'm going to need more than three pieces, so let's go ahead and just make a little bit more. That should be enough. Now, hopefully, I can get all these pieces installed into here. Okay, so that MFSU sits there. I have access to two sides of it. So one side is going to have the red net, which is it's just going to connect with white. And yeah, I can reach all that. The other MFSU is going to sit right there, and that one's going to connect there. Um, it probably does not matter about all these extra connections to all those blocks. I could turn them all off if I want, but I don't think it's really going to matter because once this is all in, it's not really going to be seen at all. So then the other thing that needs to be connected to the MFSUs is power. Now, something I like to note about the current power situation in IC2 is the cables currently do not use 
up any I cannot put that there we go the current the current cables do not um, use any power over distance they don't they don't have any resistance to them basically uh, it's a planned feature but currently it's not in in so there's no power loss in IC2 cables so we don't have to worry about that and the uh, fiber cables uh, don't exactly work 100% Right, so that's why I'm using the high voltage cables, since we don't don't want to do. That. Oh, yeah, a little bit more. So I've got the I've got the output there connected. I need to connect the redstone now down to the down to it into. Whoops, not there. Let's see here. I need to get my crescent hammer out. Should work enough for this. The best tool to work with RedNet, of course, is the the hammer from from uh, Mine Factory Reloaded. But the Crescent Hammer will do the job for the most part. And I want to just turn those off and turn those all those extra connections off for the for at least the visible part of the cable. There we go. And that's going to come down and it's going to turn the reactor on whenever the whenever the MFSUs are not full. So we need to set those redstone behaviors. Currently nothing, which I'm going to leave it at that until I'm ready to actually turn it on. But right now, I can say emit if full, emit if partially full, or emit if partially full or empty. Now this is a setting I want to use. So basically as soon as it's not full, it'll emit a redstone signal and turn the reactor on until it's charged to full capacity. Once it's charged to full capacity, it'll stop emitting a redstone signal and the reactor will shut itself off. And they're both gonna have that set. So if either of the MFSUs are not full, the reactor will turn on and charge them up. Uh, but for now, before I forget, I wanna turn that back to, no, to, no th to nothing so that I can uh, manually control the reactor from down below. Nothing, there we go when we get ready to put the parts in. So we got a ton of parts that we needed to make for this to make it work. And what we've been waiting on is aluminum. Now I have enough aluminum, I believe, to finish these up. And because there are so many of them to craft in there and a couple of stages of crafting recipes, I went ahead and taught the uh, ME system how to make the different parts for the reactor, and it's potential that we may want to put a second reactor online at some other point, so we'll have those recipes ready to go to build another one. So mostly what we'll be putting in there is vents of some sort or another. Uh, we have the component heat vent, which cools off components that are near it. We also need advanced heat vents. And these are the things we need. So we, we need the 11 component heat vents those I already crafted um, actually let's look at the recipe over here for that it's uh, a bunch of iron a regular heat vent and some tin plates also it takes a, a standard heat vent which is where all the aluminum comes into play you got aluminum plates uh, and the advanced heat vent is a diamond and two heat vents which is another ton of aluminum so we need 27 advanced vents for the design that I'm using. 27 of these things. So that's, um, I'm, oh, I need the aluminum plates out of here before it'll even allow me to start the crafting. There we go. 64 more aluminum plates, and we should be able to go ahead and start that crafting. Go ahead and craft that. 27 of them. Go ahead, do it. Thank you, thank you, Applied Energistics System. Now the other thing that we have in here is an exchanger. The only other component is an exchanger. Those, I need 11 of these as well. And you can see that, oops, uh, if I look in here, exchanger, the component, this is a component heat exchanger because I do not want it to interact with the, the uh, reactor core. The standard heat exchangers will interact with the heat in the reactor core and lower it, which I don't want to do. I only want to lower 
the heat on the components within the system. So once I get the heat level up in, in the reactor to the heat level that I want it to run at, because we're using a MOX reactor, once I get that heat level to where I want it to run at, I want it to stay there and, and never go up or down. So this, of course, requires the regular heat exchanger and some gold plates. So I've already taught both of those recipes to it. And I need, again, I need 11 of these, as same as with the component uh, heat vent. So there we go. It's going to go ahead and make those for me. And grab those 11. Let's see if it's done with all the vents. It is, in fact, done with all the vents. Okay, the problem with these is they don't stack. You got to put them in one at a time. So let me get all these out. And we get we need the uh or let's let's search heat. I'm just gonna show me all the components that I have in there. I need these ones. Whoops, not fluid tubes. Uh oh, put something back. I'll put that back for a minute. Put my tools away, and that would probably give me a little more space. And I'm done with this wire for the moment, too. Probably need some more of that in a little bit when I rearrange the wiring system down here. Now, uh, Dornell earlier went ahead and crafted up a nice advanced information panel that's going to be able to read all of the uh, sensor, the uh, MFSUs and the reactor. This reactor uh, sensor card is expensive. He, he spent a few minutes on that. So we'll, we'll show you the recipe. I'll show you the complexity of it just just so you can feel his pain for just a moment if we look at sensor cards in here the remote sensor kit for the nuclear reactor doesn't look too bad right yellow frequency transmitter that's not too bad a circuit a wire uh, but this thing the digital thermometer okay requires a thermometer and a small power unit the thermometer is a bunch of uh, some glass and some iron plate and a water cell the the power unit is a motor, a circuit, and battery, and some other parts. Motors, some coils, and some casings, and stuff. So anyway, you can you can see that they are. It's not a cheap. It's not a cheap component for um for just you know basically being able to show you the remote information on on the reactor. But it is very very useful because it will show you information that you can't get otherwise without actually looking in here, and it'll even give you some information that you can't get from looking at the regular interface. So. Well worth it. Very well worth it. So let's get our parts in here. We need component. Component. I'm just gonna I think I'm gonna speed up this whole filling in all the reactor. So you back in a second. Just enjoy the high speed video. <laughs> Okay, and there is all the components in. The five remaining slots are wherever you're going to put the MOX fuel rods, and it's going to take quad rods, quad MOX rods, uh, which is some fuel rods, some copper plates, and some iron plates. Now, hopefully, I don't think this should be receiving any signal right now. So, uh, if are, are you there, Dornell? Are you ready with the uh, quad? Um, cells yet? Nope, I'm uh, making them right now. Okay, and he's putting those together. He's already got a suit on, so I'm just going to let him deal with the rods for the time being. Uh, we are, well, I might as well let it finish processing this aluminum. We are definitely going to need more aluminum later, always. And uh, while we are waiting for that, I don't want to take away the uh, power just yet. Uh, as soon as as soon as we have the reactor ready to go, we can go ahead and pull that power over here. We might need to make another uh, uh, sensor card to because when we set that sensor card up, the the MFSU was at this location. I don't know if it's gonna keep its information when we move it over here, as far as you know, being able to connect to 
to the uh, to the display up there or not. We may need to make a new card for that, but we'll find out here in a moment when uh, we're ready to go. So as soon as those five or five quad rods are ready to go, we'll put them in the reactor and turn it online. Now, the other issue is we need RF. Because as soon as this goes away, we're going to need another source of RF. Now, fortunately, I think we might be able to just go ahead and move our hardened energy cell a little bit and connect to that line right there. Should feed power from someplace. Yeah. If we go all the way down into the bottom of the base right now, you can see that I have some survivalist, 8x survivalist generators set up, and they are, um, this one's out of fuel, so I'm going to add some fuel to that. Uh, but they are not really making that much power. They are making 40 RF tick, which is, you know, not bad for, for as efficient as they are with fuel and everything, but we need a lot more power than that for our base. I, for some reason, I was, I was uh, thinking about making the uh, 64 RF, or 64x versions of these when I when I put these together thinking that they would be enough because 64 x would put out like 320 RF a piece but we do not have the materials to build those you need bedrockium and uh, I mean we're getting closer we've got four of our sec septuple compressed ready to go we need five more and I've upgraded our cobble gen to a full stack of world interaction upgrades so it's it's producing pretty fast but we still need more. Uh, so it's going to be a few more days till we make the bedrock in, and we don't have that kind of a time. We're on a time constraint. Like I said, we're like T minus eight hours before the server updates, and we lose our, our uh, advanced generator. So we need a better power system for RF. That's going to be our issue. So what I've decided uh, for RF, instead of using the survivalist generators, I still want to use a, a generator from, uh, from extra utilities. We look at all those. Uh, I've used the lava. I mean, lava generator is, is you know, it's not bad. Um, but, you know, it requires sucking up a bunch of lava in the end. Um, logistics that I don't want to have to deal with. Keeping chunks loaded in the end. I don't really want to do that to the server. Uh, the ender generator. This is actually what I'm going to go with. Um, but let's talk real quick about the heated redstone. would have been good, but I don't want to use it burn up all of our redstone supplies on producing RF. Even though we have a lot, I just don't want to do it because it's not a renewable resource like ender pearls are. Ender pearls are renewable. I can grow them, I can farm them, and I can turn them into ender eyes, which is even more powerful in the ender generator. The culinary generator was another one that I highly considered because we could have the ME system create feast level food, which would produce a high level of power and last for a decent amount of time in that generator. Uh, the post generator I've done in previous in a previous series and it is it is nice and fun but it is a lot of logistical setup for for getting it to work um, mostly just sugar and gunpowder and and uh, redstone but again I'm using up redstone and I have to be able to farm gunpowder so I don't want to do that solar generator was uh, considered but the reason we didn't go with that one is because it doesn't work all the time you have to turn it off and on now we have Sun 24 7 here but it would still require a switching device and some extra setup. Um, plus, I'm not sure that it would produce as much power as we would need. We would need a, either a bunch of them or, or uh, you know, to produce the 8x versions of them. Now, I do want to make the 8x ender generator. Let's get the generator list back up real quick. Uh, the pink generator, I considered it for a moment, uh, but we just don't have a really good supply of pink stuff. We could make a good supply of pink stuff, but I don't know. It seemed just a little too cheap to me to be using something like that. The high temperature furnace generator. This one I'm not using just because I don't understand it exactly how it works. I know that like the more fuel you feed it, the more power it produces. I don't know whether or not it's more efficient or, or whatever. So maybe you guys can you know make an argument for me for me building one of those in the future. And the nether star generator. This is the one that I originally wanted to build. The problem is, in the new version of Extra Utilities, the the radius of the death cloud that it produces is much, much larger than the last version. So if I use the nether star generator, we'd have to like put it way outside of the base 
floating in space or something or make another little structure. I really didn't want to do that. If I put it right at the bottom of the uh, of the base, it would probably the death cloud would probably almost reach up to the center of the base. So that was nixed for the for the fact that it's a little too dangerous to be around, or we'd have to you know make a new structure just to house it outside of the base. So what we're making is the Ender generator, which requires Ender eye plates. Now this is obviously Greg Tech's doing here. And a block of steel. So we're going to need, uh, I'm going to make an 8x version of this. And we're going to need some ender plates. We need 8 times 5. We need 40 of those. We need uh, 8 blocks of steel and some furnaces. And the other stuff's pretty cheap stuff. So let's get our steel. Um, we've got plenty of steel. That's good. I think a stack's going to produce me seven blocks, and I'll have to add a little bit more to the compressor after this finishes. This. Are you ready to mess with the nuke? Ready to turn on the nuke? Um, whoops. Yeah, we can. We can do that. Okay, let me let me come down since since he's got the fuel rods ready to go, and we do need the power switched over as soon as possible. Let me get on my protective gear, my hazmat suit. Coming down now. Okay, he's, he's bringing a few rods down. Hey guys, wait for me. I want to see that too. Okay. Um, You're right there. We're going to need a lever. And then what's going to happen is while I adjust the, the heat settings, in, or while I adjust the uh, reactor, Dornell's going to go up and monitor the, uh, the display up there um, and tell me when I get to the right heat level. Well, inside the reactor has a heat. It, 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 it only tells you a percentage. And I, I know the percentage should be around 70 to 80 percent, I think. Okay. So I think we can go Are I you think ready? we can go up to 85 percent, but we don't want to go over that. Yeah, go ahead. Throw them in there. It's not gonna do it shouldn't do anything. There we go. They're in. It's it's in. It's not on yet because we don't have the, the, the automation set to it yet. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the lever, flip the lever. It's oh, going to okay. start heating up. Now, what I got to do is I got to take some vents out temporarily. And you can see that the temperature is going up relatively quick. 384, 480, 576. Let me know when we get up past 8,000. Yep. You just went over 2,000. All right. So basically, each one of these percentage temperatures is about 100 degrees. So we're probably just about went over 3,000? Yes, you did. Okay. So yeah, you can, you can tell that by the core temperature. The maximum temperature on this reactor is 10,000 degrees. At, Are you ready? Yeah. Go ahead. At uh, 8,000... 500, it starts melting blocks around it, so you don't want to go over that temperature because it could melt the uh, the cables that are connecting it to the power. So we want to run around 8,500. Now in a minute, we might start taking some heat damage. Six. Hopefully, I th I hope that the uh, the the suits is going to help us for that. Seven. Oh. Nope. Get out of there, raccoon! I need you out of. Uh, out of my I'm out. Don't worry. I need to be able to... Okay, seven. You just hit eight. I, uh, I can't. Blocks on fire. Eight, sixty-four, eighty-one, sixty. All right. How, did it level off? It said eighty-one, sixty, and it's staying there. All right, let me... I'm going to take one vent out and crank it up just a little bit more. Is it going up any? Not yet. Okay, let me take two vents out, see if it cranks up just a little bit. No? Nope. Hold on. There 82, 50, 83, 84. What are we at? 84, 48. You uh, want to stay there. 84, 48. That's pretty freaking close to what the maximum is. We do not want to go over 84, 99, or we will start melting blocks in, in the reactor core. We don't want to do that. 
So uh, we're gonna I'm gonna let it there. I'm gonna let it sit right there, and it is producing thirteen hundred and or thirteen hundred and forty fourteen RF. 1314 E or RF. Sorry. EU. EU. 1314 EU per tick. It is going. And being in that reactor room is a bad idea now because you will take fire damage in there. <laughs> and you've already crew you've already produced four million almost four million power. Okay. Um nice. Okay, so now I can set this Hang on. Before I do that, I need to remove the switch in there. Because the switch is no well the switch is is a manual override. Oh, it's can, off, okay. Now it's off, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. So now if I come over here to the MFSU and go ahead and tell it to emit if partially full, filled or empty. So if it's not full, it'll emit. As soon as it gets full, it'll stop emitting redstone. So right now, we sh we've pretty much automated the system. It'll turn the reactor on when this MFSU is no longer full. We don't have this connected just yet, but now we can go ahead and connect it. We can also move this MFSU over and re re rewire all of our our Greg Tech machines now. So. MFSU is on. Okay. And I'm gonna come down because you have your resonant cell. Sweet. Ah, oh, very good. Very good. Well, more than five meters. You know, yeah, energy go, already. Yeah, go ahead and switch that out for resonant cell, and then the uh, we can use this uh, advanced generator to charge it up before we take it down. We're gonna lose some fuel and some stuff when we take this apart, but it's not a big deal. Now, here's the big question: um, Can I move this with a dolly? And will it retain its information if I do that? Uh, where's uh, my advanced dolly? There it is. Uh, yes. This trip wonders. I can I can move the MFSU with the dolly, which is good. And then I want to put it right there. Now, question is: Is it still reading that from the uh, the thing up there? Uh, probably not, because it's based on location. Yeah, that's what I figured, but uh Uh so no, target not found. Target not found. Okay, so you're gonna have yeah. to make a new um card for that. Oh, now. you can use the same card and just uh replace inside and uh it right. doesn't work doesn't work like that. You have to make a sensor kit with and, and just the card by itself doesn't work. Yeah, I don't even oh, think okay. you can craft just the card. You have to make a sensor kit. You can okay. recycle the card to yeah. make the sensor kit, but so now if I bring this power, oh, before I do that, I want to change the settings. Can I still reach it? Yes, I can. Okay, so this one also needs to be set to emit if partially full or empty. So it's not emitting a signal, but um... okay, how do I want to do this? I have a CESU right there, so I want to come out to there. So finally, cap the energy. Um, the only thing we're waiting to tear down the uh, turbine for now is to fill up this resonant cell before that happens, because we need access to the ME system while we're switching things over. And plus, I'd like to get the uh, the re the um the other thing done. Uh, let's see, where really does it? Yeah, actually, I'm going to save a few pieces here. If I come straight out this way. There we go. I think I dropped a few bits down here. Nope. Collected all the wire. Oh. Okay, so this side is going to power these these machines here. Um, that's a few of the high voltage machines and the low voltage machines and the other a bit of high voltage machines over here. Uh, these are some medium voltage machines, more medium voltage machines, and then some high voltage machines over here. This needs to come out. I think straight this way. Yeah, let's go straight this way to connect to there. 
I'm actually going to take out this because I think this is a bit of an ugly piece of wire. So, And it doesn't need to go this far anymore. It only needs to go to there. And then I can do just come straight across here and, and loop down around that and connect there. There we go. It's a little, little better looking. Little, don't have that nasty, ugly loop going underneath the water tank anymore. Whoops. And I think I have about, I have, I actually did save a few extra wires there. So I have more wires than I started with. And we have everything reconnected to the nuclear reactor now. We are powering our Greg Tech on nuclear power. If we look in here. So yeah, that one's going to be connected. Okay, so. Uh, and then there's this machine. We'll have to find another place for that. Our, our solid liquid IC2 canning machine, which is basically only only need that to make coolant cells for a few recipes. Uh, we also need it to can our, actually we need it to can our nuclear fuel, so I might move that, uh, may, maybe the like right on top of this little thing right here, since the wire is right there. Just set it right on top of our little entryway to the nuclear reactor, because that's what it's used for, it's for making the fuel rods. And you have to have your suit on to be able to handle that stuff without getting radiation sickness, which is really, really nasty. Okay, um, this has been fixed. Oh, do you got it? You got it working now? Yep. Nice. All right. So now we have readout of our tube MFSUs down below. Uh, we can see when the reactor is online with the little online indicator up there. Uh, we can see the output of the power, 1,314 EU per tick. The temperature of the reactor is the first line. Uh, the remaining time on the fuel, that's the fuel rods that are in there, uh, which we've got two, almost, what did we start with, like two hours and 40 minutes, probably? Yeah, 2.43. Okay, so we're good, man. And then uh, when those fuel rods are spent, we're going to get plutonium back from them and be able to use that plutonium to make more mocks using the uh, uranium that we already have. And we can go get more uranium um, fairly easy. We might trade for uh, some of the other companies for uranium. We already made one small trade for some uranium from one of the other companies. So they needed some chrome, and we need power. So. Okay, I think that's uh, that's it for the IC2 power. Let's finish up the uh, RF power, and then we're going to be done with this episode because this is all about just getting the power switched over. Okay, so I need 40 eyes of Ender. Right? I think I need, yeah, it's 40 is what I said earlier. So let's, uh, actually, I'm just going to get a, well, almost a full stack. I ran out of uh, dust, but we have plenty of um, rods, blaze rods. Yeah, 333. We have a grinder down below. We can get them all, all day long, all we need. Okay, I only actually need 40, so I'm only going to grind up 40 for uh, the initial reactor, or um, generator. So I gotta, think I gotta maciate these, probably. There's the maciator. That's going to give me the ender eye dust. I'll go ahead and put those back in there. We're going to be using ender eyes for fuel in the, uh, the generator anyway so um let's see the steel that i put to compress earlier should be about ready there's seven i need one more steel block um let's see if i have them in there uh no i don't so let me get eight more steel compress that up Actually, why is it? Oh, yeah, because there was one left over from the 64. Oh, was it, that worked out. I didn't even intend to do it like that, but derped and it was good. So as soon as that's done, which is done, I can go ahead and start moving some of this ender eye dust over here to start making ender eye plates. And we're getting a little bit of lag right now. Let me 
Okay, I'm gonna need some basic furnaces. I'm gonna I need eight of those. And let's see how we're doing over here. Boy, those take a little while to compress. Yes, we are definitely getting some lag. What? Who's go who is all online? I wonder if somebody is exploring. Okay, well, while we uh, while we wait for those to craft up, hey Dorno, I have I have something, I have a project for you, a decoration project. I know you like to build stuff. What I was thinking, since this is like our area, like, and we have the living quarters above, right? Um, what I was thinking is we could actually have a split living quarters above us, so we could have an elevator on this side, because I have this kind of open area. There's nothing really going to be here, so we might as well like use it for an elevator. Right now, the elevator is like entirely too close to the crystal growth chamber. But I was thinking we could move it and then put a wall right down through the center here, so we had like a left side and right side, so we'd have my bedroom and your bedroom area, and we can decorate this all up. Kind of, it'll it'll shrink up a little bit as you put you know things up here, obviously, because I want to put walls all the way around and stuff. Um, this this block right there. Put that, that gone. So what is that? One, two, three, four. Oh shoot. Well I can move that. We can move that around. In fact. So yeah I got a cable right here. I just have to move the cable a bit. Let's see, it needs to go through there. Yeah, easy, easy peasy. Oh, oh, you know what? Actually, I want to show something here. There is a thing with the networking tool. Of course, the networking tool you can use as a wrench on your. Uh... Oops, I didn't need to take down out, did I? Um, you can use it as a as a wrench, obviously, on your. I didn't even take the last one out either. So we're gonna go like this over to there. That's gonna still be there. Okay. And this is where the hole is actually gonna be at. But um, now these are all covers. These are all multi, multi forge, multi part covers. So they, it doesn't work on them. But the trick I'm gonna show, I want to show you is if uh, you hold shift, like hold, there you go, hold shift and click, open air. You can set this to have, to show transparent facade. So when it's in your inventory, I think it's just in your inventory, it will show you through facade. So over here I've used facade. So now I can actually see through there and see what's behind there, like cable wise and stuff. Uh, same with this one. I have facades right here. So now I can see through right there. Really cool, cool little trick I uh, I caught by watching Direwolf 20. So transparent facades, uh, useful if you use the facades. Now I mostly use multi-part, or multi multi-part blocks, so it doesn't work for most of the area where we're covering up the cables because I, I tend to use those before I would go with the uh, facades because I get more of them, and facades cost metal to produce. So that goes there, and I believe that one there. That should be the right distance, I think. Yeah, should be. It'd be an awful quiet, or no? Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, we're having an elevator on each side. Yeah, so we'll have an elevator on each side. That way we'll have a, a split living quarters above. So, you know, you elevator up to your side, I elevator up to my side. It really doesn't matter which side's which. Um, and then we'll put a wall down the middle, up there. Yeah, I'll go make four elevators. And then I need to... to uh, you know there's a crafting terminal right here, right? <laughs> uh, I need to, to make the factory, or get the factory block to replace that one in the bottom. Because I'm about to, to pull it out of there. 
And let's see. Uh, not nah, chisel. That's what I'm looking for. So I need to switch these to the exterior style block. Because this, this elevator, that, that's going to be a hole in the space. Whoa. There we go. And then uh, that needs to come out. And I'll switch these over to the diamond plate. And honestly, we probably only need one elevator to go down. So whichever side we don't put the elevator, or whichever one of the sides will put an elevator down into the bottom. And the other side will only have an elevator to go up. So maybe this side will be the elevator down. Okay, that puts it right. And you know what I else I'm going to do is I'm not going to put a hole through to the outside. I'm just going to put it right there. Very good. We got a uh, world anchor over here now too because some of our chunks were not getting loaded where they needed to be. I can go there and I can take this one out as well. And think, yeah, I even have a piece of a block to go back in. And so yeah, I only need two elevators. One for one for up there and then one for right there. What does that look why is that not the same distance? Whoops. Did we did you move that over? Did you put that in the wrong place? Yeah, I think we put it in the wrong place. Hang on. Might be my fault. No no no. That was right. You were right. Right there. Whoops, my phone went there. You can put an elevator over here though. Um, not yet. I got one though. There we go. That's equal distance now. Okay. So yeah, now you can put a I mean um I'll move my under chest here real quick. Over to one side or the other. Actually, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll do a wall up. And then you can do a wall down the middle and, uh, you know, clean up the exterior walls, you know, fill in the exterior walls. Go ahead, put some beds and some furniture and just, you know, basically go to town with Bibliocraft, make it look really good in both of those. Uh, something that's not, something that's not crafty grinding and that you can do while processing ore, you know, just so you don't get bored. All right, we should have our plates by now, right? Yeah, there we go. 40 ender plates. Um, and I, I want to put that tool away because that, that that's freaky. I, I don't like seeing that all the time for sure. But there we go. Now now they're not now they're not semi transparent. So, I'm ender watching generators. this to see it shut down. There it is. Uh, what was not the same plates? Uh oh. Let me guess. I didn't make all the right plates. So these are Ender Eye plates, and these are Ender Pearl plates. Okay. Well, I made a bunch more extra than I needed, uh, but that's okay. Uh, because we'll use them up eventually. Because I want to make a 64x version of it eventually. So, um. Maciate some ender pearls. I'm probably gonna need like two stacks of these. Let's see, four times three, twenty-four. Yeah, so I need at least two stacks. Get those into the compressor. Here I was thinking I I was uh saving some time by showing you stuff off, and I still have to make parts. Still making parts. There we go. I'm going to wait for the update because we get some more different blocks. Oh, yeah, we get a ton of new blocks. So, yeah, we're almost up to full power here on the MFSUs, and then the reactor should shut down and save us our remaining time. Uh, it's getting close. And, and I'm also using some power at the same time. So, it's still you see, it's still gaining power even though I'm using up some power. 
processing materials over there. Uh, you know, I don't know if I mentioned or if I showed it already on video yet, but I do have these really awesome crafting towers built now. So we have four separate crafting computers so we can handle multiple tasks at the same time. And these are each made with one crafting coprocessor, a 4K and a 16K. So these are 20K crafting computers with coprocessors. So we should be able to do a, a considerable amount of auto crafting with just these. I'm going to mirror this on this side too now for more crafting power. So it'll have four, we'll have a total of eight crafting computers, 20Ks with coprocessors. I think that's going to be more than enough uh, auto crafting uh, CPU power for everything that we want to do in the base. Uh, eventually we're going to have some things that are somewhat automated that it's going to need to automatically be able to craft whenever it needs to craft. And I added the two extra molecular assemblers, which each have a total of three interfaces. And I could connect more interfaces to them, but I wanted to leave it so that you could see through them. I thought that was cool. Uh, if I need to eventually store more recipes in them, I'll probably put one more uh, assembler on the back and possibly one on the bottom. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's that's that. I, I don't I don't didn't know if I would show that already, but I figured I'd, I'd review it because uh, yeah, I've been doing a lot of crafting. I added a few more recipes, so now I can make uh, redstone and redstone blocks, which I set that up last episode, but didn't actually put the recipe in there, but it's in there now. So uh, let's see how we're doing on plates. We got some. Did you show them the changes we did to the monitors around the station? Uh, no, that's good. That's another good point. Uh, obviously, you see that this one's now blue to match the the area, the engineering area. Because that's definitely an engineering information panel for the reactor. Uh, it also matches over here. It's blue to kind of go with the fact that this is a, a lab mainly designated for engineering. Uh, it's all the Greg Tech stuff in that lab. So the two panels that are connected to it are blue. Over here we have two yellow panels because um, we have some build craft in here, which is where the build craft laser is at. But this is also going to be where the genetics machines go. The gendistry uh, stuff is going to end up in here. So this is basically going to be the genetics lab other than the laser, the, the laser lab in the corner here. But the rest of this area is going to be designated for gendistry and uh, bee, bee manipulation and tree manipulation. Uh, this lab, we still don't know what we're going to put in here. So, I mean, I've, I've, I've said a few things that might go in there, but... Uh, we still don't know exactly what's going to end up in there, so it's just white for now. And then this lab that's over here is the magic lab, so its monitors are now purple to match the to match what goes on in the lab. Make it, it makes it even more easy to to with a with a glance know where you need to go to do different things. And it worked. You turn it off. The, the reactor's off now. The MFS user full. Yep. And sweet. Fully automated MOX reactor producing a lot of power. So, yeah, there we go. There's our replacement. Our legitimate replacement because there's going to be an illegitimate power system coming up uh, with the update because because um, power converters. That's, that's why. <laughs> I'm going to be stepping away for a minute. Land, I'll be right back. All right, no problem. So now to combine these ender generators into, we need a node, an energy node. I don't know if I have one in here still. No, I do not. So I need to make a new energy node in the QD. So that's going to be some, uh, let me remember what it takes. Uh, it's going to be some trans uh, transfer nodes. So we'll go ahead and get us four of those and then the other stuff is a breath first do we have any of that we do not have that so i'm gonna have to craft one of these do i have the stuff to craft one yes i do um and then some gold Go put this together, and then I'll have my end generator, and I think we'll pretty much have our reactor upgraded all the way. 
And I think I'm actually going to go ahead and make enough transfer nodes to go ahead and put together three more of those. Because they will definitely be useful down the line. Go ahead and get me eight more of those so that I can go ahead and make more energy nodes. Because I'm going to need them to be building more, uh, the, the more of the uh, 8x generators. And then eventually I will need them to put together a hyper energy node, which I can then use to create the 64x generator. But I need the bedrock and ingots for that. And we're a little ways off from that yet, so we'll get there eventually. I don't think I'm going to upgrade the, the cobble gen any more than it already is. Uh, this produces like a stack per tick. Uh, and the cyclic assembler is perfectly capable of keeping up with that. If I probably put another, if I put one more transfer node like on top of there, it might be able to keep up with it, but I'm not worried about that. I don't want to spend all that lapis uh, making all those upgrades. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. So now I take my eight ender generators surrounded by a energy transfer node, and I'm going to get my 8x ender generator. Very nice. Come down here, and uh, I, I don't think I really care about these guys. I think I'm actually just going to take these out and maybe trade them, use them for trade, because I know that... Uh, I know, I know that uh, Nemgo company is using those pretty heavily for their uh, for their power, and they might trade me something good for those four. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to move this energy node up to there, and I'm going to put my one ender generator right on top of my anchor right there. That actually looks kind of cool. Kind of looks good there. Uh, come back up here, get me some eyes of ender. Eyes of ender. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eventually teach the system how to create the eyes of ender and then automatically keep this uh, with some in it. So there we go. 3, 320 RF per tick. And last a few seconds. Let's see, how long is it? One last... Uh, about 19 seconds on the uh, Ender Eye. Uh, not too bad. It's it, That's going to be decent. We're going to need more of these, though, because 320 RF a tick is definitely not enough to power. If I'm running multiple grinders and running a bunch of machines all at once, it's not enough to keep up with that. So I think maybe uh, I'm going to need, like, three or four more of those. Yeah, I'm going to need, like, three or four more of those at least. So I might go ahead and surround this on the other five open sides with uh, four more ender generators, and that's going to be enough for our for temporarily. Later on, when I move up to a 64x ender generator, we'll just have one. I think that'll produce enough power uh, because that'll be eight times that, which is uh, something I can't do in my head right now. A um, little over 2,000, um, about 2,500 RF a tick, which should be enough to to run everything that we might have, even if we had everything on at the same time. So uh, That's pretty much it at this point. Uh, the next thing to do is to go ahead and... Well, these had full power in them. Okay, they're fully powered up. I can use those someplace. Uh, this is fully powered, so I can go ahead and start taking, tearing down the turbine because I need to get... I want to see if I can get some some stuff back from that. I'm going to go head over to Echo's village where he has a uncrafting table from Twilight Forest. I'm going to go ahead and tear these back down, see if I can cut some of the iron out of them, especially the HV emitters because these have um, some high voltage transformers from IC2 in them. I, I definitely want to get those back. Uh, don't care so much about the iron as much as everything else, but uh, we have a good amount of iron right now, but we can always use more. So we'll tear down as much of it as we can with the experience that we have. We might have to go over and sit at the uh, the wither grinder for a bit. But uh, yeah, I think that's going to wrap this guys up. We are upgraded on power for a legitimate power for the upcoming update. And then uh, when the update hits, I will go ahead and show you the illegitimate power.
So till next time, guys, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it. Be sure and leave a like, comment, thumbs up, all that other stuff. Uh, and if you, even if you didn't like it, go ahead and leave me a comment. Let me know how you feel I could do better next time. Until then, I will catch you later.